Words like disruptor and game changer are used a lot in the auto industry right now as everybody goes electric. Finally, we have a car that might actually justify use of those words. This is the new MG4. You've probably seen the headlines. You've probably seen the news on completecar.ie. The reason this car is getting all the attention is because of its super low pricing. But we spent a bit more time with the car and there's a lot, lot more to it than that. It's impossible to ignore the design of this car, especially when it's in this retina searing orange colour. There are other colours, there are other bright colours as well, and I think it carries it off quite well. Regardless of which colour you go for, there's no doubt that the MG4 is a very modern design. It's a big step forward for the brand in that way, and it grabs attention on the roads. The MG4 is a conventional five door hatchback. It has got a little bit more ground clearance than most hatchbacks of its size, but it is in effect a car, which is a good thing in our book. It's not just another SUV. Up front we have a really low nose and it's quite distinctive in that way. In the middle is a big proud MG badge and either side are LED headlights. It looks very, very modern, it looks sleek. If you look a little closer, there's also quite intricate detailing on the front bumper. There's a lot of thought gone into this design. On the side, the bulk of the car is broken up by this black detailing lower down in the doors. And actually this, the exclusive model, has a two-tone paint finish. So it's got a black roof, black mirrors. It's really quite distinctive and I quite like that. The rear view is arguably the MG4's most distinctive angle. It starts with this two-tone roof sloping down into a really distinctive split spoiler. Now, MG's designed this so the airflow cleans the rear window and so there's no rear wiper. But I reckon some buyers will actually prefer if there was. The spoiler isn't the only interesting part at the back of the MG4. The lighting is also really unusual. It uses LEDs, of course, but also it's got this sculpted shape and it's very distinctive at night. Like a lot of electric cars, the floor on the back of the MG4 is quite flat. The centre passenger has to make do with a small little hump, but it's flat and it's wide, so it doesn't attract too much from legroom. It's quite a wide hatchback, so there's plenty of room to stretch out in the back. You don't expect to get three adults back here. No hatchbacks of this size easily do that, but obviously there are three seatbelts here. There are isofix mounting points in the outer two locations here, and plenty of room for mounting child seats. And also, actually, it's very easy to get in and out. The doors open wide at the back, which makes getting in and out easier for an adult, but also makes it easier to get kids in and out. As an adult sitting in, there's plenty of headroom here, and legroom is good for the size of car it is. You know, it is still a small five-door hatchback. I have plenty of room here behind my own driving position. I'm about five foot nine, and my feet have room to fit under the seat, even though I have this seat set at its lowest position. There aren't any cup holders back here, I've noticed, nor any air vents, but you know, you do get these little pouches to hold items in, maybe some smartphones, and in the middle here is a USB-C charging port. When the rear seats are in use, the boot holds 363 litres of luggage. Those seats do fold down, but unfortunately there's a bit of a step there. Still a decent space. But unfortunately, there is no separate compartment to hold the charging cables. One of the aces that the MG4 has up its sleeve is its interior. Again, MG has taken a big step forward here for the 4, and overall it's really impressive. I'll talk you through it. You get in and there's a decent sense of space straight away. You're not bumping elbows with your passengers. Along with that, there's actually a decent amount of adjustment in the driving position. So the steering wheel itself goes up and down and in and out. So there's plenty of adjustment for all sizes. And the seats in this particular car, the exclusive, are electrically adjusted. So very easy to tweak the position while you're on the move, which is really good for comfort. Speaking of specifications, MG Ireland sells two. There's the exclusive, which we're driving here, and the Excite. But if you want more detail on those specifications, go along to our review on the website. Enhancing the sense of quality is one of the major touch points of the interior, which is the steering wheel. At a glance, it looks quite unusual. It's almost square in section. And actually, it reminds us of the BMW iX's steering wheel. So MG would probably quite like that. And the comparison doesn't stop there. This feels almost as good to touch. It's got this stitching in the inside here. It's a really nice soft leather. It's good to feel. On top of that, the buttons on the spokes of the wheel are really solid. They move with real solidity. They control everything on the touch screen and in the screen in front of you. They're quite easy to get used to. It's a good design. Now on the subject of charging, depending on which battery you go for, you can charge at a DC rate of up to 135 kilowatts, which is really quite useful. It means 35 minutes, theoretically, between 10 and 80%. Depends which battery you go for, as I said. There's two different versions. The lower spec one, the cheaper one, the entry level model, has a battery capacity of just under 51 kilowatt hours, and that's usable capacity. 
while this model has one that's just under 62 kilowatt hours. What that translates into is a range of either 350 kilometers or up to 450 kilometers. Again, depending which model you go for. And you'll find that the MG delivers for the most part. We drove it earlier in the year when it was a bit warmer and this model got very, very close to its official 17 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometer inner energy consumption. Today, in the freezing cold weather here in Wicklow Mountains, we're not doing quite so good as that. We've got the heated seats on, the heating is on all the time to try and keep us warm here, and we're averaging more like 22, 23 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. You can affect the range, of course, obviously by how you drive, but there are also several driving modes to choose from here. So, it starts off in normal mode all the time. You can choose the eco mode, which will eke out every extra kilometer it can by reducing performance, etc. Or you can choose the sport mode for a bit more response. Interestingly, there's also a snow mode, so that softens off responses to the accelerator, etc. You can also choose the level of brake energy regeneration you'd like, so it goes from weak to medium to strong, or you can have an adaptive setting where the system decides what is the best for the moment. It doesn't quite go to one pedal driving in this car, but it's quite responsive and it works quite well. Um, it depends on your preference, which we quite like that you can adjust it. While I'm looking at the screen menus here, there is quite an extensive selection for the MG Pilot, and that is MG's safety suite. This car is loaded with active safety technology, actually, especially the exclusive model that gets a few extra bits and pieces. But even as standard, the Excite car comes with plenty of safety equipment. It's quite encouraging. Aside from the technology, MG has done the basics quite well. So this car rides very, very well. It's good comfort and it's quite a polished chassis. So while it is comfortable, it soaks up the bumps and everything very, very well, and it is relatively quiet, it also handles well. So body control is really good. And you know, most people aren't driving enthusiasts. Most people don't care how it handles in the corners, but they will get into this car and like how it drives. It's got direct steering, the steering feels good, the steering wheel feels good, like I mentioned earlier, but also the way the car handles corners, it just makes it pleasant to drive. And that applies whether you're in town, whether you're parking, or whether you're out in the motorway or up in the mountain roads as we are here today. It is a well set up chassis. Like the Volkswagen ID4, the electric motor in this car is at the back, so it's rear wheel drive. It means that it's even more enjoyable to drive, so enthusiasts will particularly like that. For others, it doesn't really mean very much. The traction control system itself is very, very quick. It operates quickly, so if the rear wheels lose traction at all or begin to lose traction, it cuts in quickly and it's smooth and safe. Although the MG4 is a relatively compact hatchback, out in the open road it feels like a more substantial car actually. It feels more mature, more grown up. And I think that's probably down to the suspension setup in this car. And she has done a particularly good job on that. Now I said at the start of this film that the MG has the potential to be a disruptor or a game changer. And perhaps disruptor is too strong a term because MG is already in the market, it is already disrupting the market with its electric cars. Most of its electric cars that have come before have traded on their value above anything else. You know, they're good value, they come with a seven year warranty, lots of equipment, and decent space for the price. The four continues all of that, but adds a lot more. It's good to drive, it's spacious, it looks really modern and distinctive. It's got a decent interior and the technology and safety count has gone up as well. Despite all of that, MG has managed to keep the price at a lower level than almost all of its competitors. They're right the second, there isn't anything else as big as this car and as accomplished for the price. And therefore, you have to say it is a bit of a game changer. It's a great sign of things to come and it's certainly going to be a big success for MG. If you want to know more about the MG4 and indeed all of its rivals, head on over to our website. It's completecar.ie and it's linked from the description below. It's a great resource for helping you find your next new car.